Welcome back to We Are Live, Chris Denman Live, Grand Center, St. Louis, Missouri, Midcoast Studio. Check out midcoast.media for more information. Let me tell you about a quick sponsor before we bring Travis back on, Gateway Powder Coating. That is right. They're here to help you. I believe the Black Sheep won a $100 gift certificate to Gateway Powder Coating. That means if his wheels are chipped, maybe he's got a smoker that's out of date, Maybe it's not looking so great. He can take them to Gateway Powder Coating, fast, durable, affordable. The number one resource for powder coating in the Midwest. Travis Terrell joining us this morning from the hippest part of New York. That's Brooklyn, everybody. Good morning, Travis. Welcome back to the show. Chris, no sleep to Brooklyn. Hipsterville, USA, as... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Gardner, who's the producer. You know, it's so funny that Gardner is talking about how hipster it is. He would love every square footage of this place. Everything in this, everything in Brooklyn is absolutely suited for Gardner. And it's hilarious that he thinks it's hipster. It is nothing more than a larger Central West End. You would absolutely eat it up here. There are shots on every corner. Oh, it's very gentrified, my friend. In fact, that was the thing a lot of folks were explaining to me when I was at the sports bar yesterday how the area has changed so. A lot of the natives have said it's even drastically changed even further over the last six months to a year. Hmm. So a lot apparently has changed in these communities. And that's the unique thing right now about Brooklyn is that you will go to a part where you can you, you can see a lot of the culture and then you go three, four blocks over and you can see a lot of the big towering corporate um, cookie cutter style apartment complexes yeah. now being posted up here in Brooklyn. So yeah, it, it, they say the community has changed a lot, but I, I'm almost certain you would absolutely love it here, my friend. I'm, I, I am maybe a little jealous. Maybe that's where that's coming from inside me. So I don't know. It, maybe I can at least admit that though. Where that's fair. You can. Chris would like it too. Uh, Chris would like it too because there are a lot of tall baddies, if you know what I mean, my friend. I don't wink, get wink. It. I don't, what, what you? Mm. What do you mean? You know what I mean? Some uh, tall drinks of water. Wink, a wink, wink, wink. I don't know what's happening here. You, you know what I'm talking about. Something that you can zip it up and zip it out. Mm. Wink, wink. What does that mean? I don't know what's happening. That here. sounds illegal. Uh, hang on, wait. Uh, mm. Three sponsors just jumped off. Mm. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that was legal, but they've exercised the Travis Terrell clause. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Why would you put that in the contract? Why? You know, you're such a straight shooter. I didn't ever think I didn't ever think that they would enact on it. I thought, you know what? If it gets the deal done, he's a straight shooter. He's the straight man. He'll just work through it. There's no way something like this could happen. <sighs> the Terrell Clause again. It gets you. Mm. <laughs> I'm shocked. My bad. I'm shocked when you said sports bar, you didn't reemphasize that it was a Dominican sports bar. Right. That seems like you no, would, because yeah, here's you flare but here's the it. thing. Everything here is Dominican, mm -hmm. so it's just regular you sports make it Dominican. bar. You know how you say when you go to Canada, it's not Canadian bacon, it's bacon. Right. Uh, well, here it's just sports bar or ham. Sports baro, as Travis would call it. So that's every, racist as hell. Is everything in Queens? Jamaican? Not everything, but okay. there's a lot. Um, and, and again, I, I don't mean this to even be typical Travis Terrell here, but I, I've, I've never gone this long without seeing more than 10, 15 white people. Oh, okay. Like, it is that diverse here. I, I'm, again, not trying to be cute even when i say this i have only seen 12 white people tops in the last seven eight days i think maybe you're not paying attention maybe you just don't care and that's great then possibly possibly now of course when you go further into the city um that changes but it is it has been a eye-opener to be able to walk around and see so many non-whites you're talking um that's it and you you're talking your neighborhood is what you're saying right not, yeah, not, yeah. Mm -hmm. not Manhattan I, when you go into Manhattan. I went I went to Crown Heights a couple of nights ago, oh, and yeah. that's kind of where, um, uh, if you, for those who are not familiar, it's, uh, I guess you would say where they filmed the Cosby show. Oh. So more of the kind of the upper middle class part of Brooklyn. 
And so I saw a little bit more uh, Caucasians there. Uh, but even then, it was still an even mix. Mm -hmm. It was disturbing. I'm not going to lie. I had to cross the street a couple times when I mm -hmm. saw them walking my way. But <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're nice enough folks here. They're nice enough. Put it this way. I was able to do an Uber, uh, Uber pool share. Is that when you share your Uber with people? Oh, uh, let me jot that one I, I did that. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Damn it. So Travis is saying he hears the swoosh of a, uh, a well-ironed khaki pant. And he looks the other way to make sure he can uh, run across the street. Man, as soon as I see a cardigan mm -hmm. or uh, a really fancy button up, uh, maybe something with seagulls on it, with a bunch of birds or penguins on it, I immediately yep. cross the street. Chris, what are you wearing today? Uh, I just went with a uh, charity T-shirt. So uh, you would have caught me any other day of the week. By the way, uh, it was pointed out to me that uh, comedian and um, woman who loves other women... Um, Fortune Feimster was rocking my um, patented navy blue, um, I guess, short sleeve button downs. And I was told that I may be appropriating lesbian culture. Oh. I argue, <laughs> I argue the opposite. Good luck Listen, with that argument. Yeah, I was going to say, like, come on, I've been rocking these for forever. Travis, is it possible that I've, without even realizing it, aspired to be a... Um, an alternative lifestyle woman. Apparently the new craze on Snapchat is this uh, gender switch filter. So maybe you should put on one of those, maybe you should put on one of those uh, shirts of yours and go to Snapchat and try one of those gender switch filters, take a picture and we can make a decision on the show. Do you have Snapchat, Travis? I don't have it. I, I don't have Snapchat. I think Chris, you have Snap, don't you? No, I got rid of it. I was like, this is a huge waste of time, and I don't need it on my phone. I saw that it was right. the, the people were doing that, and I was afraid that mm -hmm. if I tried it, it would just show a picture of me, just as normal. <laughs> that I would be like right. so completely gender neutral at this point yeah. that it's just, oh, it's just another picture of you. Yeah. Or, How ah, about this? It. How about this? We we don't have to set it up for uh, this week, or but let's go ahead. Let's download at least the filter for today. Okay. Let's download Snapchat. Let's all take pictures of us in the filter, and then we will all try to guess what celebrity look-alike our picture we can match up to. So that maybe we can say that for the end of the week. Okay. I mean, yeah, whatever you want to do. Let's give it a whirl. Uh, uh, you know, I, you, you, if Chris is appropriating lesbian culture, let's get to the bottom of it. It's <laughs> a fair assessment. Uh, other things See what happening. I did there, too? Get to the bottom of it? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. What even does that mean? I'll, si I'll scissor through it. Uh, Nick Freed commenting on Facebook. Uh, you haven't seen any white people because you haven't left your apartment. <laughs> <laughs> also true. Well, you have also a nice true. porch there, don't you? I have a rooftop. Okay. I have a rooftop. Oh, Talk so about I'm hipster. Nice. All right. <laughs> have me a little macchiato on the roof and hey. uh, do oh. some We Are Live from Brooklyn. Keep oh. your head on a swivel. There was a, he's a comic from Kansas City who you knew in Columbia. What was it? Kyle Ayers that he live tweeted a breakup whenever he lived in New York that was happening on the rooftop in Brooklyn. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. And that was that. like a really big real thing. And he's a he's an accomplished comic at this point. Um, but you, maybe we could have that moment for you. Maybe you could live tweet a breakup or a robbery or something. So keep your head on a swivel while you're up there on that roof. These walls are very thin here, so there's a very likelihood that I picked up four to five new subscribers of our show <laughs> this morning alone. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very possible saw, that uh, that could absolutely happen. I saw a guy put out a tweet after the Blues won against Dallas in Game 7, against the Stars, mm -hmm. that outside his apartment there was some commotion going on, and it was like a guy and girl breaking up, and the mm -hmm. girl was trying to – make him uh, stay or something, he said. And then, like, the guy's last words were, Won't you stay <laughs> with me? The guy's last words were, The Blues won tonight. I don't need you. Oh, and, no. And then he was like, he after that, he said. He flipped his mullet and he was <laughs> off into the night. <laughs> he said, The Blues freed a man tonight. And I was like, oh, my God. So if that's actually I true, that tweet is true, that was. 
That was quite the story. It had me chuckling a little bit. I believe it. I be- those are things that drunk, angry, stupid arguments bring out yeah. of people. So. I- <laughs> Travis, is, Travis is without words. He's like, damn, you I white imagine- people keep whitening it up. <laughs> I, that is the widest thing that has ever widened. <laughs> Just prepare yourself. I have the blues. Breakups I will be on bl- Make It Racist this week. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I was going to say, if we... Um, Travis, I only say this because I've seen it too many times, and maybe it has nothing to do. It was, it's been 100% black folks fighting at bus stops that are obviously couples and then help each other onto the bus. If I look the other way at that, if I look the other way at that, you have to look the other way at drunken, nonsensical reasoning for why I'll be okay without you. Is that fair? Can we finally come to a fair. racial tacit agreement that we have to do this? If I look the other way whenever... A young lady puts her hand up to block her face and it hits like two jabs out there and he's got head movement rocking and then maybe throws a leg kick and then there's eventually the best part is when they help each other onto the bus after there's been a physical <laughs> altercation. If I look the other way for that and say, hey, hey, hey not, my, uh, not my culture, then I need you to only chuckle, not laugh out loud or live tweet whenever things like these happen. I think from what I'm understanding here in New York is that business picks up like most cities, when the weather gets a little bit warmer. So that's when I will start getting some serious public transportation stories as the weather gets a little warmer. I think it's about 45, 46 here today. So everyone's gonna be pretty cool, calm and collected. But as we get into late May, early June, I expect to start seeing some, the the things that I always see on Twitter that go viral. I expect to see it live and up close. So I'm. Really looking forward to it, honestly. Now, there is one thing that apparently you weren't aware of that's uh, about 60 miles away from you, actually, in New Jersey. And I don't know how you weren't aware of this before you went to the big city. But um, <laughs> Why did you say it like that? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. But Jerk. It's something I'm very aware of just because I try to research and uh, stay on top of things like this. But I'm going to show you a video, Travis, right here in Frankfurt Township, New Jersey. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Two black bears fighting. Mm-mm. Look at them go. Look at how strong they are. Are they fighting or are they just, hey, boo, just messing around with each other? Oh, yeah. is this a cultural thing? No, well, it's because they're black bears. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. they have- Yes, they just like, oh, hey, 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 bear. So did you see that video there? I did. I, I saw the video, but it wasn't until I think yesterday. It, I saw the video. It wasn't until yesterday when I uh, realized it was in New Jersey. I did not know it was in New Jersey. There's black bears all over New Jersey. I, I didn't realize it. that. That's, I didn't sign up for that. New Jersey's where that bear that they filmed that had been walking on its hind legs the black bear that was walk, like walking like a person, and the theory was that it had injured its front leg somehow, and so adapted, as apex predators can, and now walks <laughs> like a human, like on its back legs, just on two legs. That's That was in New Jersey. They're all over. It, and I don't know and why... You know, you know what's crazy about that, Gardner? The craziest thing about that is that there's some tough-ass people in New Jersey, and those folks who were filming that kept a very safe distance and was not going to risk it. They were not going to, the bears obviously were occupied with each other, but they were like, nope, not even going to mess with it. That's how you know that was a serious situation. And I know maybe some people are surprised to learn about the bears there in New Jersey, but this Frankfurt Township, I looked it up yesterday, it's 60 miles outside the city. So this is 60 miles from you. It's about an hour and a half drive, it seems. But, so this is like St. Francis State Park as yeah, St. Louis to there's, a, there's to... a there's a place there right next to it called Bear Swamp Wildlife <laughs> Management Area. And I'm like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, do your research, right, Chris? Yeah. Right, well, Tom? Do your research, like, look, it's, look it's into it's this. The ultimate, it's the ultimate narcissism. It's right on your front doorstep, and you're like, in New York? And it, you know, there's areas like this right around there. That, mm-hmm. And there's a state park right there, too. Uh, Delaware Water Gap National Recreation. I mean, so there's all this. I mean, when you think of New York, everyone's so narrow-minded in thinking of the city itself, mm-hmm. but you're 60 miles outside, and you have 
a lot of recreation going on. There's well, a reason why there's a difference between upstate New York and the rest of the state. There, it's, I mean, it's exactly like the thing here. I think it's like west of here. All the wives in like Kirkwood are like, why does my husband keep going to Whore Forest every weekend? Like, this is so weird. Mm -hmm. It's a very relatable St. <laughs> Louis problem. <laughs> Would that be a Horace? Oh Would that be a Horace? Yes, a Horace. <laughs> Hitting the Horace, honey. Horace Whitaker. Mm. Uh, I'll stop you two. Sit, stop it. Uh, what? I'll try. Uh, Travis, we've got the Great American Race on tap. Um, I think you've been Jones. I feel like you're avoiding. I feel. I feel like you're avoiding this segment today, and I understand. Why. <laughs> oh, I mean, we're up against it. It's nine twenty-six, and you know the powers that be, the FCC and other regulatory uh, governing bodies of podcasts, mm. they don't like us to go past nine twenty-eight mm. on Mondays. So mm. that is a bit of an issue. Um, maybe I'll just live read it out for the rest of the show. Uh, <laughs> Hillside Animal Hospital. That's right, Doctor Ed's here. Every Wednesday, Dr. Ed doles out veterinary advice for free and also plays Dogs on Film. Really looking forward to more collabs with intern Tommy and Sean, the voiceover guy. That's right. Dogs on Film every Wednesday with Hillside Animal Hospital's Dr. Ed Minieko. My, uh, my blood, my blood uh, mark uh, cleared up, Travis, so I'm not getting the... Uh, eh, heroin's really taking over St. Louis look anymore every time I go into a gas station. Excuse me? <laughs> One little track mark makes my tattoos look like goes from bad decisions to like life choices for the way I'm uh, I, I'm pursuing things. One little track mark just did that for me. Well, I mean, you got the I thing with lives. the nose. Yeah. You, you do oh! the thing with the hair from time to time. You have the fluctuating weight. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's a fair question to bring up, Chris. Um, A bit you could, uh, no, not you, maybe like Jamie Crock could help me uh, flesh out is I was offered cocaine for the 1,000th time <laughs> last week. and uh, Bro, and you was, send so many signals. You I send do. so many signals. You got to knock do. that off. And then whenever I tell people, like, not my thing, never done it, um, they go, what? <laughs> you, yeah. think I'm a, you think I'm punk? Like, well, I got you offered lie to me? heroin like a month ago at the gas station. Really? Yeah. Well, they were, they, were trolling for, they were trolling for a customer, right? I mean, the guy followed me out of the Garden, you have heroin tendencies. I mean, you do fit the traditional heroin customer look. How is that? You just give off that vibe. You just give off that vibe that, man, I, I need to shoot up. And so maybe that's that's something you should consider. Yeah, maybe cut your hair. Addictive type personality, maybe. Mm. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. And I've even said, like, well, maybe I need to stop hanging out places ever. But it's happened in broad daylight in a nice grocery store before, too. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. I have uh, I understand that it's me. Now, I know we've dodged this for a little bit here now. Well, another thing I was going <laughs> to tell you about maybe is uh, our good friends at Soul Shine Barefoot Massage Therapy. They oh. hooked up one. That's a new sponsor. They hooked up a big winner over the weekend. We did a Mother's Day giveaway. Congrats to uh, a young man by the name of Nick. Tagged his wife. Got her a, uh, a basket worth of stuff. I want to say it's like a $200 value. Oh, my. I, we're giving away nice. too much here. Like, we need to stop doing that. Um, but Soul Shine Barefoot Massage Therapy, big thanks to them. Uh, they're a new sponsor, and uh, his wife got a Mother's Day package with a T-shirt, water bottle, all kinds of great stuff, and we're really proud to uh, work with that. Travis, are you aware of how many women-owned businesses we work with? It's a lot. You know who heads up those relationships? Me. Mm -hmm. I do that. You know why? Because I like bringing in diversity to a team, and I love working with strong, powerful women in the St. Louis area, like Debbie Dugan from St. Louis Counseling Services, who's mm. part of Mental Health Matters. Lovely, lovely person. The podcast records here. You can check it out. <laughs> They've been improving lives Something since 19. They're like, I thought he was kidding about live reading the rest of the show. St. Louis Counseling Services, improving lives, helping businesses and individuals out separately, together, however you need to go after it. St. Louis Counseling, here for you and yours today. All right, let's do this great American race. What do we got? Okay. Well, there's no open. It's Perhaps time for open. the great American Ray from Brooklyn. Live from Brooklyn. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, we've been avoiding this for a particular reason, and we'll get to that in a moment. But, Travis, first off, I need to offer you 
an apology. <laughs> All right, we got the scoreboard up here now. It's 770 Travis, 760 Chris. We use a credit score mm. throughout the month. You each present a story that would make the others race, their community maybe look bad. Why are you jiving and wailing over there, And uh, he's excited this morning about his story, I know. Um, and then we, you know, either add or take away points depending on what those stories are. So Travis is winning after, what is it, one week here into May? Um, you called me out last week, Travis, for not docking Chris points for being prepared. Oh, it's plenty For prepared. not being prepared. Plenty prepared. And... <laughs> I had done the same to you before. You basically called me a racist. Um, I That is correct. I might have been racist as hell. I might have been racist as hell. Oh, another hell. self-hating, <gasps> long-haired, liberal white guy. Big so, surprise. I thought about it over the weekend and was like, man, Travis is white. You know what was speaking there? I've, Maybe, I've been reflecting into my crystals quite a bit, guys. I did, you know. I have them right here, actually, next to me. Uh, I wasn't feeling well this weekend, and I was told to consult your crystals. Well, I got Damn. a couple here. I got some Tibetan tech tight, some okay. traditional quartz, if you'd like. All right. Right here at the desk. Um, so I, I reflected, as Chris made fun of there, Travis, and thought about mm -hmm. it. And you know what? Maybe I just, maybe it was my ignorance. I just didn't see it. And I want to learn. I want to be better. But I also want to be fair. So maybe it was my white privilege speaking. Do you think that could My have been God. the case, Travis? That's always the case. That is no doubt about it. And I'm glad okay. you're finally acknowledging it. I, if I were you, uh, how, the best way to break that white privilege is to maybe add a few more points to my score. Well, here's what I was thinking, is that I realized that it was my white privilege speaking. Oh, wow. And what I hadn't done for Chris is, you know, give him points for his white privilege. So I am going to add 60 points to Chris's score as we start this week because I realized I had failed to give him points for white privilege, Travis. That's right. Um, so I appreciate you pointing that out to me last mm -hmm. week, giving me the time to reflect and think about it and realize what I had done and the mistake I had made in the scoring by not giving Chris more points, uh, I'll give him, I'll just give him 50. We'll just leave, you know, something like that. Uh, so I'm going to make uh, Chris have 810 to your 770 mm -hmm. as we start today's uh, great American race. So thank you, Travis, for pointing that out to me and allowing me the time to reflect and appropriately be fair in the scoring. Oh, he's walked what? off the scene but, into the Brooklyn night. Mm. Guess I win. But, 810 to 770. The Great oh, American Race. Oh, he's up. Once again. Travis, calm down. Travis. He's pacing. Calm down, Travis. Mm -hmm. what, um, why don't we allow Chris E2, to... Brute. Uh, E2. Quote Medea in the park. Coming soon, this fall. I think Medea's farewell still going on at the Fox Room over this weekend. You got to take jazz. <laughs> Please just take jazz. No, I mean, it's the show is still going. The last show was supposed to be Sunday night, and then it's Got still started carried later. Over. It's like nine, ten hours long. <laughs> so why don't uh, this week for the Great American Race, uh, I'm going to get out of the way here for now, and uh, we'll start with Chris's story for this week. How about that? Oh, this is okay. a... This is a simple story. Uh, it's one of these that uh, tale as old as time. Uh, ever heard of the name Mara Hall, Travis? Does that come to mind? I have not. Uh, Dwayne Perkins. I I have not heard of these people. Oh, interesting. Um, Tierra Parker. I think I know where you're going with this. I don't know any of these people though. Oh, okay. Uh, they're the co-stars of a film called Laquisha, which has recently made the rounds on Twitter. Online! That's right, Laquisha. You want to know what's going on? A white guy pretends to be a black female talk radio host and becomes a huge hit. 
That sounds racist, ma'am. Who would ever do something like that? Uh, Laquisha, again, it stars Jeremy Seville. He's the director, writer, and he uh, heads up that wonderful cast of, uh, there's a lot of representative uh, folks of people of color in the cast. Uh, the Great American Race, my focus is on your people, those people, Tierra, uh, Jay, Mara. Yeah, we'll even throw in Alvarez Ricardez on this. He's uh, partially culpable. Dwayne Perkins. And uh, Kiki Young, Thaddeus Eck, all these people that are part of this film that has taken over not only black Twitter but regular Twitter to say, hey, do we need Mistral movies in uh, 2019? Is that what's happening here? That's right. Laquisha is a white dude playing uh, the voice of a uh, black woman, takes over a city, and despite what I'm guessing uh, has a Hollywood, we all learn about each other ending... I don't need it, Travis, and the support that these black folks show this film by being paid to be in it, to, be, to, to gain from the exposure, from a guy whose biggest credit to date was basically a pass-through on Modern Family. Nick Freed laughs at his credit list. That's right. Laquisha, the great American race, taking you down one actor at a time. Hmm. It's just disappointing. We fought so hard as a people to make this happen, and Laquisha... Mm. takes all the, the joy out of everything. I'm not going to dock or add points as of yet. Travis, I assume that Laquisha will also be the topic of your Great American Race story, correct? It will be. Before we get into it, Chris had mentioned it and has taken one angle, trying to spin it in his favor. No, no, I was B-Rabbit, which has nothing to do with the topic at hand, by the way. But before we continue... I think it's time to watch the trailer for the movie. <laughs> God, I can't believe Man, I don't want to see this. <laughs> who would ever do this? No, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to sit your ass down. No, I'm going to do it. No, sit your black ass down. Name, name, name <laughs> one white dude who ever do a black woman's voice <laughs> on a broadcast. Oh, no. I don't see the problem. Mm. Why, what's going on? Man, this is outrageous. <laughs> Maneuver. Sit your black ass down. Gardner, roll the film. <laughs> Yeah, you punk always ass. seem to say the right thing to just the right person. What's your secret? I'm really just talking to myself. I don't charge for my advice. Well, you should, because it was amazing. I saw this, and I thought of you. You will be a hit in no time. Welcome to the Joe Show. I submitted myself to a radio station for my own show. Well, congratulations. That's how it works, people. You just submit it. yourself. Well, well, congratulations, then. Oh. You weren't right for your own show? Jason skipped it. We need to get the money for this school. 13000 a semester? That's who needs their own show. If I was a black woman, I'd be perfect. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 She's brilliant. I know. Get her in here. No, quick, gonna be the biggest thing in radio. But I still need my anonymity. You nervous? It's not a crime. It's theater. Like it. You love with Loquisha. What's your problem? <laughs> yeah, it's free. Oh, I ain't talking to you, not the way you sound. Next caller. You go, girl. Oh. You just be good to her. If you good to yourself, mm -hmm. you can be good to others. But don't oh. be too good, because the police will come around. Yeah. Where did you get this? I got another job. Doing what? Consulting work. What the hell would you know about being a white guy anyway? I know quite a bit. Loquisha is a real role model for every African an American woman on this planet. It's like the whole city has a Quisha mania. I am low Quisha officer. What was that? I think I might be a black woman trapped in a white man's body. You need to talk to low Quisha. Just because she's a woman and a black person doesn't mean that she doesn't understand you. Is this really happening? I'm on a bridge above the river and I'm gonna jump. But thanks for calling. Enjoy your jump. I gotta start listening to her. Who cut that trailer? <laughs> I gotta start listening to her. <laughs> Man, so many people of color in that film. How how dis how disappointing. How disparaging. Mm. It's almost like it couldn't have happened without them. First off, 
Hang on, wait, wait, <laughs> Travis, Travis. Before you, you've got an hour. I know you're gonna go. I know you're gonna finish up the show. I know you're gonna. Shook a, I know you're gonna finish up the show. May I get another word in so I don't have to interrupt you? you may I? It. Okay. I just. I'm gonna give you the next 30 minutes on this. Do you realize the only reason they hired those actors of color? They priced What's out. The reason? Fa- they priced out face paint, and it was going to be too much on the budget. So uh-huh. that's the only thing that changed that. So I've actually already undermined my own argument. <laughs> so I'm going to just let you take this and run with it. Also, I called Freed out, and I said if he would have been offered 10% above his normal rate, he would have taken a job on that film in no time. And he said, uh, probably true. <laughs> <laughs> Despite being appalled by the film, by the way. Travis, if you if you're offered. With that, with just the tagline, the okay, ready on IMDb, on IMDb. Before again, I'm giving you 30 minutes straight, uninterrupted. Jeremy Seville's uh, for the movie, Laquisha on IMDb. A white guy pretends to be a black female talk radio host and becomes a huge hit. They offer you a writing credit and say it's going to X amount of festivals, and you get paid scale, and you get to be a member of uh, the WAG, Writers Actors Guild. I think you still say yes. I don't. I, I don't, oh, ma'am. I don't, I don't think you understand how screenwriting works. I, I think. What <laughs> we're, uh, Sorry, I, I thirty think, minutes is up. Go, you, you, you're on. I, let me first start with your argument, uh, and you kind of just alluded to that point. I don't blame these black actors for being in this movie because if you live in LA and you're trying to find work. You have to take care of your family. You have to mortgage to pay. You need whatever credits you can get. So as it already is very difficult for black actors to find work, I understand the decision to perhaps take on a role in this movie. Uh, so to for, for a, a white man to then blame African-Americans from actually pulling up themselves from the bootstraps and taking care of themselves and being self-sufficient, I think that in itself is Chris telling on himself because he doesn't like it even when he doesn't even like it when blacks even go out there and get work. It, no, I'm he, saying he that if you're going to say about it, be about it. I just think that when it comes to the industry, if you try to get work, uh, you're apparently going to get criticized like the folks by Chris Denman. Uh, but those are the same also gatekeepers who prevent other black actors from being in the industry as well. So they have no choice but to take on these dumbass roles because of white people like Chris. Now, oh, as far man. as the movie wow. is concerned, uh, as far as the movie is concerned, let's start with the title. It doesn't get more. I have to be quiet. <laughs> than Laquisha. Um, of all the black names he could have chosen, he specifically went after what he probably deemed the most ghettoist and most blackest name he can think of, and that in itself should be an embarrassment for your people. Secondly, it wasn't even funny. And again, Chris says I use this word quite a lot, but. I think it certainly applies in this instance. Another mediocre white male thinking he's funny, getting the opportunity to create art. And in this particular case, it's far from art. This is something that Tommy could have come up with. This is something that, this is something even Chris, if you gave him six hours, he could probably come up with. The fact that it not only wasn't funny, but unoriginal as well. It's an old, SNL sketch from the 1970s. What an embarrassment for your people to put this out as comedy. All the great white comedians of the day, and that's who you guys send out to do a movie about black women? And thirdly, you you cannot make trolling black people a part of your marketing strategy. That is beyond racist. That is incredibly lazy. It's offensive. It's stupid. It's not creative. And if I am a white male today, you understand why minorities are taking your jobs because you guys suck. Look at that. This is the kind of content you guys put together. You have an opportunity to work with a diverse cast and you lean on stereotypes. I would be ashamed. If I was a white male today, I wouldn't even leave my house considering that this guy, this guy, is the one representing your race when it comes to filmmaking. You guys have gone from Scorsese and Spielberg 
to what's this guy's name again? Something Seville. Jeremy. I, <laughs> I wouldn't doubt Jeremy if this was self financed. We'll see. And not only that, apparently, according to the film festival that he puts in the opening parts of the trailer, has already distanced themselves from him. They're saying that not at any point that they screen his movie and they are already calling BS. So they're asking that anything associated with their film festival be removed from that trailer. So even other white people are running away from this white man. Chris, this is not only a sad day for your culture, it's a sad day for your history. You guys used to make great movies like Jaws and E.T. and now you've been, now LaQuisha? LaQuisha, man? Mm -mm -mm. Man, I don't know what to do. I feel for you, bro. Mm. All right, maneuver, maneuver. Did I tell your ass to come out the room? Get your ass back in there. Now, the fella did um, post something on. I thought it was fake, for real. So the movie. Mm -hmm. I think a lot. I, I a think, lot of people did. I think. Well, the acting the, quite bad. It was so in bad. A lot of people did. Right? Like yes. how? How is that? By the, the way, was like terrible. that was exp even the camera work and editing. Yeah. That's a, that's, you know what? That's expensive. The, the the worst acting job there was in that trailer. Sorry, Travis. I know this is an issue here for you. But the worst acting job was the drunk at the bar. That's not a drunk at a bar. Right. That's so over the top that it's just not believable. Will, that Fer that's, Will Ferrell. Well, that's like uh, what? Who was the drunk that was always? I was on the on the roast. Um, Brooks Fo Ron White? Foster Bro Foster Brooks. Okay. Rex uh, Foster was the Rams receiver. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I remember you had to reverse them, and then you got the other one. So what? No, but yeah, what Will Ferrell said uh, in an interview, he's like, if you want to play drunk, you have to act like you're you're fighting to not look drunk, right? You don't just be like ah over the top. You're, yeah, that's you're, not yeah. no, no, no. I know plenty of professional drunks. Mm -hmm. But it, I think the white, the also the. I think also the widest part of the trailer was that he wasn't doing this necessarily to pay his own rent or maybe he had a sick kid in the hospital. <laughs> yes, he was paying for private school. <laughs> it does it. He literally cre he stole an identity, created a fake identity, and apparently he got paid for it, by the way. So he's committing fraud and he's, I would imagine, violating how many tax laws. But he's doing it to Travis pay for the tax law now? private school. So I'm just saying this guy is risk going to jail to pay for his young kids' private school. So really, does it get more white than that, guys? It could happen right here in St. Louis. Hello, it's Lakeisha. <laughs> sounds, sounds like it could happen right here in St. Louis. <laughs> oh No, my rap music's too loud. Hang on. <laughs> What? And then not only that, what made it what made it even worse is that it, it as if people are truly looking for talent to go on radio in 2019. Like there are radio executives still sitting around an office desk looking for radio talent. That was also embarrassing because that's <laughs> that's beyond that's believable. Baby. No one but, does but that. I don't that's, know. I don't know. No, no they want it. They want it all programmed ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they they want it all, all you know syndicate. Uh, that's not syndicated, but you know it's all yeah. programmed ahead. Couple messages from the comments. Travis taking us to church this morning. Big surprise. That's from Meredith. Uh, and then she says, "No, she would not take a role in the film." I don't believe that for a second. She says, "Morals and standards only come with the absence of white privilege." <laughs> very so true. That's a, a very worshiper. good statement. You got yourself a woke word. But I don't, I don't like, I, I seriously don't even blame the actors for being in it. Look, if you work in, if you live in LA, we've been to LA several times. We know how cost of living is. We know how difficult it is to get one credit. It's tough to get into a freaking Tylenol commercial. So I understand why those actors probably took that movie because if it is to scale, that pays for maybe a couple of months of rent. And when, again, opportunities, auditions are hard to come by, especially as a minority, you got to take what you can get until you're in a position like, say, a Kerry Washington or Viola Davis, where you can truly turn down roles. But for for a filmmaker of, of any race, especially white, uh, in the age of 2019 to develop a movie that's just based on not even up to date stereotypes. I think that's the thing that stereotypes are dated. You know, I, I think we've seen enough black characters on TV, especially black women characters, to have seen that angry sister, sassy black woman before. 
So for him to fall back on a dated stereotype is what was more offensive to me. Like that, if he did that in 1991, okay, maybe a few people would go out and laugh at that and get the joke. But in 2019, really, you're going to do the sassy black woman? That's that's just that's not even close to being creative. Um, I'm going to <clears throat> make my ruling here in a moment. Travis, I'm going to start with your score. Okay. Uh, you've made a lot of fair points, a lot of accurate points. I'm going to take 10 points off your score, though, because you failed to bring up one I thought that really could even fit more into stereotypes. And maybe you're just okay. unaware of it, and maybe that's why. But the guy, Jeremy okay. Seville, posted on uh, social media. Is it the Marlon Wayne's photo? Yes. You should have brought up what? the Marlon Wayne's photo. Hey, hey, you need to switch that up. It would have been better if he said he posted this live to Stormfront. <laughs> <laughs> so he posts a picture of himself with Marlon Wayne's and then says, with Marlon Wayne's, Laquisha, Laquisha movie, meet hashtag white chicks. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for all you do. Keep laughing and loving. And was it more predictable to use the white chicks trope? I mean, it's like uh, gun control, violence. Uh, Chicago, Chicago. That in a situation where it's a bit racially tinged, blackface might even come up in the conversation that you don't, someone has to bring up the movie White Chicks, right? Um, so if you would have brought that up, into your argument as well, you probably just would have stayed steady at your score. Okay. Uh, Cause even That's Marlon Wayne's responded with, I hate when people tag me in their bullshit. It's as no, it's as annoying as fuck. Um, Cause then he's involved in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so pro the other guy's trying to deflect, which you know pretty well, Travis, I've seen you deflect yourself pretty uh, effectively. I'll say that <laughs> at times. Travis, you're four hours late. You said you'd be here. <laughs> Lincoln wouldn't have went up, up, up. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. So I think if you would have brought that up in your argument as well, uh, that would have helped you. So I'm going to knock 10 points off your score from 770 to 760. Uh, this isn't Chris's fault. This needed to be said. Isn't Chris's fault that this is out there? Um, he tried to make an argument that uh, there's really only one angle to take, and he took that angle. Um, so. Did you not like my tie-in with the bee rabbit? Uh, you know, that was also could also be argued like, well, you know, there's a lot of black rappers that are pretty good too. I mean, you didn't see the correlation to where I was self-aware of what was happening. And oh, then, I, I understood the correlation. I just refused to acknowledge it because it sucked. Uh, yeah. I, so, like I said, this this isn't Chris's fault. Having said that, oh. I knocked 150 points oh, off boy. his score. Oh, wow. So he goes down to 660. Oh, thank you, Seville. You're thank at you, 760. Seville. Okay. It's, they, I mean, what's All he right. supposed to do? Okay, Seville. Chris, Chris was put on, in an unenviable uh, position mm -hmm. to have a conversation It was a Jesse Smollett this. situation. It was yeah, a I mean, Jesse Smollett. Smollett. Yeah. I had to endure it, so yeah. Sorry, really, Chris. Really, that's a 200-point knockoff, but once again, white privilege stepped in, so I kept it at 150. Uh, but you have a 100 point advantage on May the 13th now in the great American race for this month, 760 to 660. As soon as I saw this thing popping on Friday on, uh, the socials, I knew we were going to have to address it in some way or another on the show on Monday. And, um, we just gave Travis, I mean, we don't, we don't know what to do. You know what? I'll give Chris 10 more points just because it was a tough situation. For the me. black sheep uh, was a comment. <laughs> I think this could take down a few points. Uh, in quotes, he had the opportunity to work with minorities and he decided to lean on black stereotypes, and that's garbage. Same person, oh. Travis Rell. Why it. haven't you seen a Tyler Perry movie yet? They're great. That's from the black sheep. I took 10. I, I will, I think, as far as that's, but I think that's where. I think if you're ripping off Tyler Perry and you're a white artist, shouldn't Chris lose more points? Because not only are you what? antagonizing stereotypes, but you're ripping off a black man, white people. Why would you be proud of a white artist ripping off a black man, especially be, one like Tyler Perry? 
to be fair, if Tyler Perry would have made it, it would have been like, what would it have been? Uh, like Laquisha radio host. And that would be her like full name. <laughs> or it would be called radio host. It would be about a woman named Laquisha radio host. Betty publicist. Yeah. Betty publicist. <laughs> Is that not how he works or you work to that matter? Now the only thing I, I think, not- it was, I think that was the, only, the thing that really just, again, that, yeah, I, the stereotypes are ugly and stupid, and that goes without saying. I think just the film itself looked dated. It just looked, it just looked like it cherry picked of some of the worst movies we've seen from like the late '80s, early '90s. Yeah. So I think the the part that really gets under my skin is how unoriginal it was. And That's again, around, for your it's around now. So I, yeah, I don't know. I just thought that was it was lazy it too. Out. It was just. Yes. Like imagine, imagine getting funding for a movie, and that's what you do. Imagine. Yeah, National Treasure Three should be everyone's first thing. <laughs> that's true. Uh, we have someone on the line by the name of C. Thomas Howell. Be like, hey, back oh. off him. Oh. He was great in the movie Side Out. How about Soul Man mm-hmm. <laughs> from 1986? Uh, wow, what a. Uh... But I think that's what makes it so much. I, I, I think, and then also. Uh, Gardner, look at Chris. Just look at him. Let's look at his face. Uh-huh. Come on, that deserves at least another twenty points. Let's see here. Positive. I, yes. I'm going to do this, and I don't know how bad the screen's going to look, but I'm going to look at Chris's face here. Yeah, it's not going to work here. Nope. Come over. Wait, there. hang on, hang on. Am I oh. doing? Am I doing blackface? Oh. Oh. Oh, that's. Oh, come on. That's an I, additional fifty points. First right time there. Travis has had a full <laughs> head of hair in twenty years. <laughs> Oh, he was going to lose points, but then he gets 10 points back for that comment. Oh, look at that. You got hair. <laughs> I will wear your hair. <laughs> look how thick my neck is now. <laughs> well fed in New York. All right, Travis gets 10. Okay. All right, good interaction there, folks. Oh, he's going to... Oh, he's going to... Get your hand off my shoulder. Oh, it's inside your brain. It's like in the movie Hannibal. Yes. Ew, so 770 to 660 is where we stand after Loquisha uh, was discussed in the Great American Race. Mm, there mm-hmm. you go. Hopefully, there's thank you, Jeremy. Films coming out next week. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's a rough one. I'm sorry. There were like Chris. four World Star videos I could have went to this week, and I had to, <laughs> I had to stick with this. <laughs> Cousin threw an alligator at another cousin, and it's mm. going to be bad. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, we've got fair or foul coming up, everybody. Real quick, i got to tell you about Tommy Bannister from Circa Properties. Realtor to the stars. That's right. Whenever Travis comes back, an HBO writer, he's going to be looking for a home. Travis, who are you going to use? The realtor to the stars. <laughs> Tommy Bannister from Circa Good Properties. Boy. He's here to help for you. He'll walk you through the entire process with a wonderful team. That's Tommy Bannister, Circa Properties. We've got Fair or Foul coming up in just a moment. Travis, anything uh, we need to hit on before we shut the show down for the day and go to Fair or Foul to give away $10 of Buzz's Wine Grill? I know we have a comedy show this weekend at Southtown Pub. Actually, it's a really cool show. We have uh, Jovan Bibbs headlining. He dominated New York comedy for a few years, Travis. I'm sure you still... Get comparisons to him all the time as you're uh, traversing about Brooklyn and, and the like. Uh, he's going to headline. We've got Rick Wood coming in from Los Angeles. A guy by the name of Erickson coming in from Los Angeles. And it's going to be a heck of a time, you guys. Matt Wayman's going to open it up. You know why I love Matt Wayman, Travis? Because I go, hey. Why do you love Matt Wayman? I say, hey, you're a dad. When do you want to go on? And he says, first, because I like the challenge and I can go home early. That's right. Matt Wayman, very funny. And you don't always see those people jumping on that first spot, but he crushes it. So be sure to get there early. 8 o'clock, free comedy Thursday at Southtown Pub. This Thursday, stick around for karaoke after. It's been super, super fun recently. I'm very excited to uh, bring you another week of uh, free comedy Thursday. Travis, it's fair or foul time. You excited? We're in your five minutes, Chris. Uh, I could just talk about uh, our relationship in the show for eight. (laughs) <laughs> okay yeah will you I've do that seen, this thursday i've seen much worse <laughs> i'll say that that's always will, a good way to measure thursday? yourself that's always a good way to measure You've yourself seen much worse <laughs> yeah, always be like well if somebody else sucked i could be a four to their three that's how i go about life pal 
the only thing I have to say before Farrah file is that if you have a reliable HBO login and password, if you could send that my way and my direct messages on Facebook, I would certainly appreciate that. So any of our listeners out there who have HBO Go and would like me to catch up on the last two episodes of Game of Thrones, please send it my way. Do you have to allow people to actually follow you to do that? No, you don't have to follow me. Uh, any any HBO Go password login would work. No, anybody I mean, at account, Rosie's, anybody right? in the office. They have to already be following you to get that to you because you're a protected account? You can actually send direct messages um, to true. anyone. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, get Zuckerberg on that one. Sorry. Uh-huh. Hey, hey, guys. Uh-huh. It's time for fair. Or foul. At this defining moment, change has come to America. People often ask me, what's fair or foul? Is it a segment? Is it a movement? Is it hope? I can't say for certain. Time will be a true test of its power. But I can say, Fair or Foul is now and forever for the people. Gather around the radio with your loved ones and hold on to your butts. It's now time for Fair. We give it back to you, the people. Or Foul. <laughs> That's how a hipster laughs here in Brooklyn. Oh, mm. wow. Thanks for the update for us hayseeds here. Uh, we asked you a very important question regarding Gloria being played during lovemaking. <sighs> I don't need you. The blues won. We'll see more of that, hopefully, <laughs> coming soon. A uh, couple of submissions, so let's get to them. Ten bucks to Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. Uh, foul. Selecting music to freak to is essential to the lovemaking experience. Oh, it's helpful. I highly recommend doing the nasty to Beck's Midnight Vultures. As for Gloria, that's a no from me, dog. The song is 349 long, and we all know Travis will never last that long. Like Ms. Brannigan sings, I think you've got to slow down before you start to blow it. <laughs> Carl Malone's collarbone. <laughs> Fair. Lord knows if Trav has the chance of receiving the touch of a woman, whatever is playing is fair. Doesn't happen that often, so Denman, you take care of business with the Avett brothers in the background, and Gardner can do the nasty with Neutral Milk Hotel blaring away. <laughs> Don't judge a man's booty call music. It's all fair game. <laughs> TTs. Pink eye. <laughs> Tough one here, guys. Travis, you go first. You're the New Yorker. New Yorkers go first. Carl Malone's collarbone. I'll go uh, TT's pink eye. Just because I wanted to put it on you. This is a toss-up, really, I think. This it is. is. They're this good. is a tough one. Carl Malone's collarbone has won okay. $10 to Buzz's Hawaiian Grill. Congratulations to the... Co- <laughs> Congratulations to the collarbone on a great name as well. I'll say that. Uh, Travis, what's on tap for uh, New York today? What do you got moving? Uh, I have to pitch my three premise uh, pilot ideas to uh, the staff at Sesame Street today. So Detective Charlie and two new pilots that I created over the last week. Uh, So I'm excited about to, uh, we're about to make a decision. We have to choose between one of the three pilots today. And um, we'll see. That's really exciting. So very excited about that today. And uh, we got a few speakers who work in the industry coming by today. So we'll get to do some networking. So uh, heading on down to Manhattan, uh, probably here in an hour or so. Well, congratulations. Kick some ass today for your walnuts. And uh, <clears throat> hope it goes amazing. That's such an important uh, thing to be a part of. So big shout out to Travis. Be sure to request following him on Twitter. Black to the future. Uh, for everybody today, it's been a blast. Be sure to check out midcoast.media for more information about us. Thanks to all of our sponsors. For all of you for tuning in, it's been an absolute blast today. Great job to Chris Gardner. We're back tomorrow live at 8 a.m. We'll see you then. Peace.